Hey friends, this is Eugene from WorkerBee, and today we've got another installment in our series of switching from Mac to PC. Now, this is our third video. If you haven't seen the other two, in the first one, we go over why we're switching from Mac to PC for creative work. We've gotten a lot of responses on this video, so it definitely struck a chord with some of you. And our second video is all about picking the best components. As a creative, we use very specific software and getting just the right components for your custom build can result in a huge performance increase. So make sure you check out that video. But if you breeze through both of those, it's time to actually build a PC. We've got the parts, so there's only one thing left to do. Let's unbox them. Now, before you get too ahead of yourself and pull everything out of its packaging, a lot of PC components are an intoxicating mix of expensive and hyper fragile. So watch out, maybe keep some of those components you'll be using later on in their cases for now. You also don't wanna mix up all your manuals because you will need to refer to those as you're putting your PC together. So the first thing you'll really need is your case. Now, there's a whole wide variety of cases from dirt cheap to super expensive, and you'll probably wanna land somewhere in between. With a cheaper case, it can be a little complicated to put it together because everything's not very thought through. And as you move up in price, the build quality goes up. And with that, you get a lot of kind of like little tweaks in the case that make it easier to assemble, easier to manage your cables, which we'll get to later. Um, and overall make the entire process a lot more pleasant. Remember, you can reuse your case in future builds, so it's worth spending a little bit more money and getting one that's pleasurable to use and that looks nice under your desk. So this is what it looks like. Pretty sleek, black, clean, and there's actually sound insulation panels on the inside of all these walls that we'll see that will hopefully keep the whole thing a little quieter. If it's your first time, it's important to go slow and really take your time to enjoy the process. If you have a cluttered workspace, don't have the tools you need, the whole thing's gonna be a bit of a grind. So before you get started, here are the things you're gonna need to gather. Number one, a screwdriver set. You'll probably need some really small screwdrivers because there's gonna be a lot of small screws. Next, you're gonna drop those small screws. So you'll need a flashlight to see into dark parts of your case to find the small screws that you dropped and you'll need some tweezers for picking up the small screws that you found with your flashlight. It also helps to have a soft cloth or cardboard on the surface you're working on, and finally, a working computer nearby so that you can look things up as you're working on your build. All right, now it's time to finally start putting components into your case, and we're gonna start with the motherboard. In general, as you build your PC, there is an order to doing things, but a lot of the parts can be swapped around and you know, you can always take a step back and remove something. So don't worry, you can't make like a ton of mistakes. As long as you don't pour uh, some water on there, I think you'll be good to go. The motherboard should fit in a snug position, likely on some risers, and it'll probably be held down by some screws. If you're not sure how something fits, check the motherboard manual or your case manual. With all of your components, make sure you don't over tighten the screws. So the motherboard is in with a little bit of massaging. Um, the port is lined up perfectly and everything looks flush. So we're gonna move on to installing CPU. Now, this is probably the most fragile and most expensive part of your PC. So take your time with this one, orient yourself, and make sure you know exactly what you're about to do before you start doing it. The CPU is gonna go into this slot right here. Basically, there's a little cover on here. You're gonna pull this open. It's gonna flip open like this. And then your CPU is gonna go right in there. Make sure you remove the case covering the pins when you install the CPU. I slightly put mine back on top here just to keep the CPU covered until we install the cooling, which is next. But make sure you're extra careful not to bend any of those pins. And if something's really not fitting, take a moment, read the manual, make sure you're doing it right. The next part is to install the cooling. Now, 
there's a couple options. Some of you might be using a heatsink, which is probably the more common way to cool a CPU. It's usually a heatsink and a fan, and it just goes right on top of the CPU. I'm gonna be using a water cooling setup just because my computer is a little more powerful. It needs a little bit more heat dissipation. And also, you know, I've wanted water cooling since I was a kid, so why the heck not? Whichever way you're cooling the CPU, you're gonna likely have to add some sort of frame to the motherboard and CPU in order for the cooler to lock into it. You'll notice in your cooling setup, there's a part that actually touches the CPU and it's gonna have some sort of thermal paste on it. Now, in most setups, you know, it'll be right on there already. You don't need to touch it or anything. If there's like some plastic on it, just peel it off and it goes straight on top of your uh, CPU. Sometimes you might need to put it on yourself. It's a little nerve wracking, but definitely necessary. Be careful not to touch it and disturb it too much. Just pop it right on. So now I'm gonna add fans for my water cooling heatsink. If you're not going the water cooling route, you probably won't have to do this. Uh, likely there'll be fans already built into your PC. But regardless, if you're installing fans, there's one really important thing to know, and that's fans are directional. Now generally, you want air flowing through your computer in a clean passage, rather than blowing into it from both sides. The next thing we're gonna do is install a couple SSD drives. Now we're specifically installing the M2 PCI Express drives, not the sort of standalone SSD. We'll do one of those later. This was new for me and it requires removing a heatsink from your motherboard, then plugging in your SSD, screwing it in, and putting the heatsink back on. Now as a creative, the next one is probably my favorite component, the video card. Man, as a kid, we would always obsess over the new video cards that were coming out. And honestly, now I just don't have time to keep up with any of that stuff. But I'm really excited. This one looks like a beast, so let's pop it in. Video card's pretty easy to install, but at first you're gonna have to remove a couple of port covers to make room for your card. With all of the components, make sure you remove any protective plastic wrap and contact covers before you pop them in. Now the video card just gets pushed down into the PCI slot and you just screw it in likely with a thumb screw or a regular screw if uh, that's your case. Now if there's one component you're familiar with installing, it's probably the RAM. I think almost all of us have installed RAM at some point in our lives. And if you haven't, you're in luck because it's super easy. I'm using four sticks of RAM, all the same size, all the same brand, all the same speed which means that I can put them into any slot. If you're using a mix of different RAM types or you're not filling up all your slots, then there will be specific slots on your motherboard that you need to fill up first, and there's an order to them. So check your motherboard manual, it'll tell you the order, and make sure you do it that way. You can lose a lot of performance by not installing your RAM into the proper slots. For these, you'll need to open the tabs of your RAM slots and pop them in one at a time. You'll have to apply some pressure from the top and the lock on each end of the RAM slot will just click into place. Now, hold up, let's take a break one second and talk about power supplies. Now, the power supply I got is a modular power supply, which means you can remove the cables that are coming out of it a regular power supply just has a whole bunch of power cables coming out of it. So if yours looks a little different from mine, uh, that's probably why I just wanted to have, you know, as few cables in there as possible to maximize airflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my power supply to the side for now, but I'm gonna connect all the power cables to the components and run them through. Now as to the cables themselves, they will likely be labeled like these ones. And for critical components, the ports are unique, so you can't mix them up too much. Most things that you add to the case will need to be connected to power, and this includes the motherboard, video card, any fans, water cooling, hard drive, even the actual case itself. 
In my experience, most build issues result from not connecting one of the power cables. So give it a good once over. When you install a component, make sure to take note of it and make sure you hook up a power cable to it as well. Now we're gonna install the Serial ATA SSD drive, which has a platter in my case back here. So I'm gonna remove the mount, I'm gonna attach it to the drive, and then I'm gonna install it back on top of the case. Now the SSD will require both a power cable and a data cable. We're getting really close to the finish line now, and it's time to connect our I.O. cables. Now, what the heck are I.O. cables? Likely when you got your case uh, and you first took a look at it, you saw there was like a bundle of cables somewhere that was just attached to the case and attached to nothing else. Those are the cables that enable all the input and output ports on your case, like mics, headphones, USB ports, and buttons to talk to your motherboard. You likely have to reference both the case and the motherboard manual to find the right locations, but these cables should also be labeled in some form. So take a look and just double check the manuals if you're not sure how to connect them, but they all have a place and it should come together pretty easily. Now that all of our cables are connected and all of our components are in the case, it's time to add in our power supply and connect those power cables into it in my case. Uh, in your case, if you have a regular power supply and you want to put that in and connect all the power cables now, that works great too. Again, don't forget, make sure you're practicing good cable management and be careful when sliding the power supply in as it could pinch the cables further on in the case. So just keep an eye on it and do it slow. Don't just jam anything in if it's not fitting easily. Once all the cables are connected and the power supply is in, it's time to do a test run. Now at this point, the worst thing you can do is completely seal up your case. It's a curse. Now, I'm not superstitious, but I did watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch as a kid, so I think I'm gonna put a few of my panels on, but not screw anything in too much, just in case there's an issue and they need to dive back in there. Make sure that everything is connected, such as your monitor, and power cables, and often on your power supply, there will actually be another power switch outside of the main power button for your computer. So make sure that is on as well. And once everything's connected, you're ready to power up your computer for the first time. It's the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing boots up. Oh my goodness, fingers crossed. Ah, oh, it's so satisfying. If yours didn't start up right away, it's okay. You know, don't panic, it's probably not a big deal. I would just disconnect all the power, you know, look, in, look through all your components and make sure they all have a power and data cable when needed. Make sure there's no kind of like loose cables touching metal parts and things like that. Sometimes you can short something, but for the most part, it's usually a power issue or you didn't connect something else uh, outside of your case. So just give it a good once over and try again. You'll get it up in no time. Wow, thank you so much for coming on this journey with me and helping me build my PC. It's been really awesome to share this process with you. And remember, this is just the third video in our series of switching from Mac to PC. In the first video, we talk about why we switched from Mac to PC. In the second video, we show you how to pick the best parts to optimize your PC for the software that you use as a creative. And make sure you're subscribed because we're always releasing helpful, inspiring content, whether it's tech tips or freelance advice, or just our day-to-day -day creative life. Now, in the next video we're gonna share in this series is gonna be a desk tour of our brand new setup. Not only did I get a new PC, but I also got a new monitor, speakers, keyboard, mouse, all that good stuff. And if you wanna know which parts I got, you're gonna to wanna to see the next video. So hit subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss it, and drop us a comment introducing yourself and let us know, have you ever built a PC? If you have any questions about building them, we're happy to answer them. And remember, all of the components we used are linked down in the description below. It's been so awesome having you here. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you next time.